Hello viewers of my channel. Radio manufacturer Harris has a whole series or family of radios that are used in NATO countries and in countries influenced by NATO. This is the Harris RF5800 radio series. There are several backpack radios in this series, quite large ones, I told you about a shortwave radio operating in the frequency range from 1.6 to 60 MHz, that is, covering most of the low band. There is a VHF radio in the same knapsack version, operating from 30 to 108 and from 30 to 512 MHz. There is such a portable radio that you can hold in your hand. It also works from 30 to 108 MHz, that is, in the low band, it also covers the mid band. Accordingly, it can communicate with all other backpack radios from this 5800 series. And with shortwave, operating up to 60 MHz, with VHF radio, which operates from 30 to 108 MHz in the same way as portable, and with one that operates from 30 to 512 MHz, the same can be communicated in the low band and mid band bands. Today I will tell you about the Harris RF5800 portable radio. This radio model is also called RF5800, VHH. V means VHF band, HH means handheld, that is, portable. This radio operates in the frequency range from 30 to 108 MHz, that is, it covers the entire low band and mid band, and reaches the broadcast range of 88 to 108 MHz, in which it can also work only in narrow band frequency modulation. It can transmit speech in this narrowband frequency modulation, it can transmit data, it can transmit speech over the data. The output power of the transmitter is 5 watts. There are also two reduced power modes, the average 2 watts and the smallest 0.25 watts. By the way, 0.25 watts is a very economical mode, it is convenient to use it for the closest communication. The battery is saved, and your signal will not be heard far away. The radio is powered by a removable battery. The most common type is a lithium battery containing three cells with a capacity of 4.8 amp per hour. The operating voltage corresponds to three elements. The battery says it's 10 and a half volts. But in fact, this is the final voltage at the end of charging 12.6 volts. And for each element, the voltage is 4.2 volts at the end of the charge process. The battery is connected in this way, with a swivel connector. There is no difference which side to attach. It can be this side, it can be this. It is very difficult to make a mistake in installing the battery. There are two contacts in the center. These contacts are round, so when you turn, the contact is maintained and it does not matter which side to install. There is a latch on the side wall of the case, which snaps itself when the battery is installed, and in order to remove the battery, you need to lift this latch up and turn the battery. This is how the battery is connected. The capacity of 4.8 amp per hour is quite large, and in general this whole radio is very large and heavy, so against the background of the total weight of the radio, the weight of the battery is not so noticeable. Different devices are used to charge the battery. One of them is such a desktop, office. It looks like some kind of plastic fake, but it's actually the original version, it's not some kind of Chinese fake, it's also made by Harris. A power adapter is connected to the charger for AC power. This charger can charge the battery, and can pre-discharge and then charge, in order to run a full cycle. Although lithium batteries do not seem to require this. There is also a charger that works simultaneously with two batteries or simultaneously with six batteries. There are several such chargers or you can say charging stations. There are several contact pads on the underside of the battery and the charger has several contacts that are spring-loaded and connect to the contacts on the battery. These contacts are positioned so that either side of the radio or battery can be placed in the charger. You can put it this way, you can turn it 180 degrees, and charging will work. It is impossible to confuse the polarity or installation method when charging the radio. It's very convenient, you can't make a mistake, you can't break something. The dimensions of this radio are very large, of course it is portable, designed solely to be held in the hand. It's convenient to keep it by the way. Here on the case there are notches for fingers, and in general the edges are all rounded, it holds quite comfortably. But it is very large and very heavy. If we compare it with the usual non-military radios that we are used to, for example, with a very large Motorola MT-1000, which, by the way, 
can also be in the low band. I have it on low band. Then these radios are a little comparable in size, of course. But even this huge Motorola is smaller than Harris, and the usual radios we are used to are such as Motorola P080 or P040 or GP340. Any Motorola they are about this size, or modern DMR are about this size, then with Harris they certainly combine very funny. It seems that this is a fairly large Motorola in ordinary life, which are larger than any Chinese, it is just a baby compared to Harris. И она по сравнению с этим Харрисом просто малюк. Of course, a very important question. How are operating frequencies set in this radio? There are two ways to do this. On the side wall there is a multi-pin connector to which various devices are connected, for example, an external microphone or headset can be connected to it, a data cable can be connected to this connector when the radio acts as a modem, as a data transmission device. By the way, in this case there are two modes of operation. The first is when the data itself is transmitted directly over the cable. The radio has a COM port, or a PPP connection is established over the cable, and IP packets are being transmitted. So here, the cable for programming is connected to this connector. With the help of special software, you can change channel frequencies, adjust all other radio settings. But there is a second way, which involves setting up the radio completely from the keyboard, without connecting any external devices. Moreover, this method is regular, it is not some kind of test mode, not some kind of hack, of this radio, so to speak, but directly in it there is a special programming mode in the fields. The channels in this radio are called networks, that is, you turned on some channel, in fact you went out for radio communication in some network. These networks in the settings can be described up to 25 pieces. Although only five networks are turned on from the channel switch on the top wall of the radio, only five channels. But there is a scan mode, which, by the way, is also turned on with a switch, there is a separate V, scan, position for it, and a scan list can be described in the radio settings, which includes not only the first five but any networks out of 25 possible. And there are arrow buttons on the front panel, which, under some circumstances, can also be used to switch networks. I have already mentioned the multi-pin connector on the side wall of the radio, to which a microphone can be connected, and also on the top wall there is a round military connector, like in most NATO radios, to which some kind of handset, microphone or some kind of repeater device. This is a low-frequency connector for connecting low-frequency terminal equipment. A multi-pin connector is a connector, including for data transfer and for radio programming. And the radio has a connector for connecting an antenna. This connector is reinforced with TNC, that is, the connector is strong enough with a threaded connection, and it is also reinforced from below with a large metal platform. The antenna is connected about the thread, connected and abutted against this very metal platform. The connection is very strong, much stronger than if there was the same BNC connector or even more so SMA. Antennas for this radio are mainly used in two types. Here is such a short and flexible antenna. It looks like a helical antenna, but it is actually a broadband antenna. This is not a helical antenna tuned to some part of the low band, but a low efficiency broadband antenna. It works in the entire frequency range from 30 to 108 MHz. In such a wide band, such a short antenna can only work due to a matching device that contains some kind of resistor that absorbs some kind of resistance. If we look at the SWR of this antenna over the entire frequency range using an antenna analyzer, we will see that it does not have any pronounced resonance, and therefore does not have high efficiency. Here is the antenna, but it is convenient in that it does not need to be rebuilt. Any narrowband antenna would be very dependent on external objects. If you take it with your hand, lean against something, then its effectiveness immediately drops very much by dozens of times, or even hundreds. In this antenna, the efficiency is already very low, and from touching it, firstly, it does not fall, 
And secondly, it works like this in the entire frequency range from 30 to 108 MHz. There is also a ribbon antenna. I told you about such antennas in a separate video. The ribbon antenna has exactly the same connector, and by the way, it is also not resonant, it is also broadband and works in the same frequency range throughout this frequency range. You can bend it like this. Here is a flexible gooseneck base. And of course it is much more efficient at low band frequencies, even though it is not a resonant antenna. But for that, you can probably say that it is not so convenient. And I have already told you more than once about the switch on the top side of the radio housing. This is the main radio mode switch. We can say that this is the most important control element. It produces power up the radio. The first position on it is the position called off, the power is turned off. Further, the following five positions are five channels, five networks, which can be switched as a channel switch, with this switch. Then the next position is scan. This position starts scanning on the scan list to be programmed. The next position is FP. This is the front panel mode, that is, channel control from the front panel with the up and down buttons. And the last position is Z all. This is a radio reset, that is, deleting all settings. If you want to instantly delete everything because these radio settings are of some value so that the enemy does not get them, there is a delete mode. To delete, toggle this switch to the Z all position. This is the very last position. You can just scroll the switch all the way without looking at the radio. And the next thing to do. On the top wall there is a miniature toggle switch with three positions. It has two fixed positions, and the third one is like a button. In this position it can only be switched and held there with your finger. And this third position is also zeroing. To reset all the settings of the radio, you need to switch the main switch to the extreme position and press this toggle switch also to the extreme position, hold it there. Then all settings will be reset, all frequencies will be reset, and so on. Also, this top miniature toggle switch has two positions PT and CT. This is the usual work in frequency modulation. PT translates as plain text and CT, respectively, encrypted work, crypto text. And the third position with the letter Z, as I said, is not non-fixed, it works like a button, you need to hold the toggle switch in this position. This is the reset position for all radio settings. Another of the controls on the sidewall is a button for turning on the transmit mode, which is large and quite convenient. Moreover, it is protected around by a special protrusion on the case. Above it there are dual volume buttons, plus minus. By simply pressing this button we change the volume. At the bottom there is a button for forced opening of the squelch. And unfortunately the button works with fixation. You can't just press and listen to the broadcast for a couple of seconds, then release the button. It works with fixation. That is, I pressed it, released it, now the squelch is open. Pressed again, the squelch closed. Not very convenient. And in some cases, on the contrary, it will be convenient because someone will listen to the broadcast without using the squelch at all, and will turn it off using this button. The radio also has a monochrome LCD display and green backlit buttons. The backlight can turn on only when the buttons are pressed for a while, or it can work continuously. There are various settings menus in the radio, you can turn on frequency programming, as I said, it can turn on various self-tests, change different settings, for example, how the data port works, and so on. All this can be done from the radio buttons. Of course, I will not describe this in detail, since there are operating instructions for this. There are a lot of functions and possibilities, there are a lot of different menu items, and a story about this would take several hours. There is also a miniature signal level indicator on the radio display, you can say AS meter. It now shows almost half the scale from the noise of the ether, since I have a computer turned on nearby, cameras, monitors, and a lot of other digital equipment. And if you now disconnect the antenna from the radio, then the noise level will drop sharply. With a meter there will be nothing to show. In general, it is probably also a necessary and convenient function. You can somehow understand from it with what level the signal from the correspondent we hear. If by ear we do not determine it ourselves.
The body of the radio, of course, is very durable metal and quite dust and moisture resistant. There are various gaskets and where the loudspeaker and microphone are located. Everything is also protected by special protective films. As a result, the modulation of the radio is not very good when working on the built-in microphone. When connecting external microphones and headsets, the modulation will be much better. But from the built-in microphone, it is quite booming. Let's hear how it all sounds. I will now transmit from the radio, and my signal will be received by the FT-847 transceiver here on the table, and this signal will be recorded on the computer. You will already hear a signal in the video, recorded from the line output of the transceiver. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, check the 5800 radio. This radio has many different features. There is a modification of the radio with a built-in GPS receiver. It has a small GPS antenna on the case. This version of the radio can also transmit its coordinates over the air using data transmission. Unfortunately, there are practically no services left in the low band in our city, and I cannot show you the operation of this radio for reception when listening to some signals of various radio communications. Simply because listen to nothing. But on the other hand, I will conduct a radio connection from it with a conventional Motorola radio, also on the low band, which is located at a distance of several hundred meters from me in another building. One, two, three, four, five, ping. Can you hear me? Over. I can hear you well. Yes, I'm sure of you too, practically without noise. How is my modulation? The modulation is a bit boomy, as if a speaker is being used instead of a microphone. Clear. Here the station is waterproof, probably because of this. Thank you all. There are many different accessories for these radios, such as battery box that accept different types of batteries. There is also a power cable that connects instead of the battery compartment and has a connector for connecting the power supply. There is a car adapter, a certain block in which such a radio is installed inside, attached to it, powered by it. The control is connected to it and the antenna is turned onto it, since this unit also contains a power amplifier. In general, many different external equipment attachments exist for this radio. Of course, such a radio is very durable, very reliable, but I think it is not very convenient to use it for some professional peaceful purposes. Since, not to mention the fact that it is very expensive, it is still very large and very heavy, weighs about a kilogram with a battery, firstly. Secondly, the band is unpopular low band, not very convenient for some kind of professional use. Basically, everyone is trying to use the higher frequency band VHF, UHF. And thirdly, of course, it is completely unsuitable for amateur radio purposes, since it does not fall into any amateur radio band in our country. Where there are 50 MHz, it certainly falls into this band, you can use it for amateur radio purposes, where there are 50 MHz. On my channel, I try to tell you about various radio communication equipment, both professional and amateur radio, and even household. And about the military, too. There are a lot of different radio equipment, different radios, antennas, some additional devices. All this is very interesting. So get involved in radio communication, use it for practical purposes, and for various experiments, watch my videos. Alexei Igonen was here, bye everyone.